this. Oi. Good evening, Milt. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives? Yes. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. Do they all buy it for the same price? I think so. I sold like two to him. 315 for his shotgun. Whew. That was a nasty shotgun. Yeah, it starts off at that level. Oh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it starts out at this level. He sells it back to you for 72. <laughs> this is silly. Yeah, you can sell your... Yeah, you can sell these if you wanted to, too. You could make them and sell them for more. Modern steak of made of the best ally with the Preguin symbol engraved on the on the grip. Uh, don't want to do anything else. I don't think it moves to the next night. I think you are going to reveal all your secrets to me. Even the darkest thoughts in your heart. My blood and... Someone's poached my blanket. Cold will be my death. She's not worth any XP. <laughs> Spare me, Dark Queen. Spare your obedient slave. About the use of garlic and wooden steaks. What? Why does she have this? Dear brothers, I must now draw your attention to a very important point. The use of garlic as a protection against vampires. Let's be crystal clear on the subject. Garlic will never protect you against those creatures. No matter how fresh, how strong, and how smelly, garlic is totally useless as a defense. I can never say enough how damaging that novel of Bram Stoker has been. Yes, of course. Population of Slavic countries place garlic cloves in coffins. Yes, of course, inhabitants of Santorini Island hang garlic on their windows. There would be so much to write about this place, and someday soon, I hope to go back to this island to further explore its occult tradition. Uh, but that is not to protect the living from the devil. It is to tell the dead that they are aware of their malevolence. It is a symbol, nothing more, and nothing less. So please, by all means, yes, wear garlic. Show garlic, hang garlic, tell the shadows that you are not afraid, but if you're looking for supernatural protection, you will have to search much deeper into the forgotten secrets of the occult tradition. So here's the truth, my fellow brothers. Garlic does not repel vampires, but all the fresh plants will hurt them. It is as if their body could not stand the presence of botanical elements. I have seen an enraged vulp flee when whacked with a rose. Yes, a s what? A simple rose. I witnessed a violent Ekon fall down and beg for mercy when struck by a wooden stake. I don't know why it is so effective, and I would give my left arm to find the answer so that that mystery... to that mystery. But the truth remains nevertheless. Vampires are very sensitive to fresh herbs, plants, and woods. From Facing the Shadows, How and Why, by Usher Tall Tree, Prim Primate of St. Paul. That's weird. I can't. I can't touch fresh herbs. <laughs> oh, they—they they don't need to eat anything, so never mind. Um, we can we can continue with the story. I was thinking about going to the docks, but I think it's okay if we do this. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. I, I already know about it though. Can you, can you see through the slit what's going on?
I would ask you to avert your eyes, sir. Or did you not know it was rude to stare? I knew it. Speak up, Dr. Reed. I like a man who speaks his mind. Hiding your true appetites behind a facade of compassion. Bravo. Very clever indeed. Spare me your sarcasm, Jonathan. <laughs> you are but newly born in this world. We are vampires. We live by leeching the blood from weaker prey. We are Darwin's next chapter. His cynical and perhaps ultimate expression. The situation is somewhat awkward, nonetheless. I have not been observed sustaining myself for many decades. I have to say, I'm a trifle embarrassed. Anyway, I have concluded my inquiries concerning your blackmailer. I see. Please excuse my agitated state. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't let anyone see me in this condition. I must confess I have not put an end to the blackmail, my lady. Unfortunately, I could not bring myself to do it. I'm so disappointed in you, Jonathan. I what? didn't expect this from you. Lady Ashbury, you yourself admitted how ridiculous the sum of money was. I can assure you it was all used for charitable ends. Well, you were full of surprises, aren't you, Jonathan? All right? Say I trust you. But you will still pay the ransom. That is only fair. After all, it was you who failed to bring this problem to a satisfactory conclusion. I believe I could agree to that. And since a lady always keeps her promises, I will now answer any questions you may have. A vampire? <laughs> Is that what I am? What we are? Such a crude word. Defined by penny dreadfuls and drunken hacks. No. You are now an Ekon. And that you shall remain. So we are Ekons. How can I identify us amongst other vampires? How to put it? All Ekon are vampires. But all vampires are not Ekon. We are a... Uh... But a branch of the immortal tree. Are you an Ekon too? Yes, I am. We are the closest thing to what man refers to as vampires. Forget what you think you know about us. I don't understand. Why was I created and then left for dead? That is a question only the one who made you can answer. It's not normal practice. I doubt even if you find him, he will answer you, considering how cruelly he treated you. So me being a vampire could have been a mistake. I very much doubt it, Jonathan. Contrary to the legends, it is not as simple to make another vampire by just biting someone. I'd like to avoid creating another vampire by mistake anyway. Tell me, how is it done? <sighs> the process is dangerous. It could even kill your potential progeny. If you did decide to sire an offspring, they must drink of your blood, Jonathan. I've been hearing a voice talking in my head. Is this some kind of insanity? It feels like the voice of the vampire that created me. Hush. Tell no one this. It would be unwise to talk of such things amongst British immortals. Speak no more of your maker. How could this cause offense? Only the powerful immortals can mentally call to their progeny. No vampire or hunter will sleep easy knowing that an unidentified elder is stalking the streets of London. Excuse my forwardness, but... Are you my maker? Me? Goodness, no. 
Only a foolish immortal would create a progeny without taking precaution, and I'm no fool. Are there many vampires here in London? Immortals are of a rare breed, and we often tend to hide. But you may occasionally meet some of us at night. Will they all be as affable as you, my lady? I do not see why not. But remember, even the shark smiles before he bites. That sounds like a lesson from experience. Vampire politics are as intricate and sometimes tedious as a game of chess in a gentleman's club. I've learned from experience it is best to decline to play. Do you know any of them? Have you an idea of the identity of the vampire who attacked me? You mean your maker? No, Jonathan, I have no clue. But I fear he or she is as careless as cruel. To let you discover your new condition by yourself. What do you mean? Every now and then, you may discover an immortal in the deep of the night. But we are a rare and reclusive breed. Our progeny is almost never accidental. When I awoke, changed, I was chased and attacked by vampire hunters. Prepared and well trained. Though I can't be certain, more than likely it was the once glorious guard of Prewen. You make them sound like some sort of cult. More a society, and like all the best ones, a secret society. I thought them almost gone, but it seems they have been recruiting. Once glorious, but still dangerous. They have seen better days, but all fanatics are dangerous. You would be wise to stay clear. They are sworn to destroy our kind. I've been away from London and England for three years. This isn't the city I remember. Things have gone from bad to worse here, Jonathan. I've lived in this city for a long time. And I've never seen it like this. What is it you fear? Fear has long since flown this form. But there is something malevolent circling us. I feel fear is merely waiting in the wings. The Spanish flu has hit London that bad. Yes, but it's not just that. I've heard things. Things I've not heard for a very, very long time. There are whispers in the shadows. Something far worse than the Spanish flu is here in the city. Why does Dr. Swansea allow you to feed on the patients of the hospital? Dr. Swansea is a good and compassionate man. He is trying to find a solution for our... hunger. Until that happens, he is clever enough to understand that I only feed upon the dying. And no one suspected you of the murders? As you well know, suspicion has recently fallen on me of killing for pleasure. But you have my word, Jonathan. I take no pleasure in taking a life. What do you know about this Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole? The Brotherhood is well known amongst London vampire society. As long as our kind is discreet, and as long as they do not interfere, we have come to a mutual understanding. Why did you save me in the canning factory? I could hardly stand by and watch such a promising young blood as yourself be torn to shreds by some gutter skull. What type of vampire is a skull? Not go. a true vampire. The deformed offspring of lesser vampires. It is a shame these creatures run wild, slaves to their baser instincts. William Bishop wasn't the vampire that created me then. No, Jonathan. Whatever their strength and demeanor, Skulls are the progeny of careless vampires. It cannot be the other way round. I know this is beyond the pale, 
But may I inquire your age? Really? And I thought you were gentlemen. If you must know, I'm 27. I've been 27 for a long time now. And 27 I shall remain. Very well. But I believe there is more to this than you are saying. A lady has to have some secrets. And who bestowed upon you this eternal youth? My maker. He left this isle a long time ago. I bid you farewell for now. I must quickly analyze the blood I took from Nurse Crane's patient. Got a nice little bit of a story there for you. Side. I think we're gonna head over to the docks. It was, it's very big. For being after the first part of the game, it's, it's a pretty big jump of things for you to learn. It's nice that it's uh, earlier on though. It doesn't take forever for you to get those kind of answers. So you kind of know what's going on, what you're fighting, what you are, stuff like that. There's a hideout, yeah. Another letter, oh my gosh. <laughs> and another one. Whew! More lore, woo! <laughs> okay, uh... <clears throat> and a pretty good one, too, after what we were just talking about. Vampires create their foul progeny with blood. We all know that. Some of us witness the process, even. But what is really going on there? It is the only way for a vampire to... breed. Let's review what we know so far. When willing to create a progeny, a vampire will not bite, but give its blood to drink. Some of the victims die when bitten, but some of them survive and turn into leeches themselves. This only happens when they have assimilated, ass yeah, assimilated the vampire blood one way or another. It is not the predator's bite, but its blood that infects the victim who will turn if he or she survives the suffering of the metamorphosis. It also seems that a vampire can breed by having intercourse a vampire mates to produce a child. Sexual <laughs> intercourse between vampire and human rarely produce any birth, but some of them tried anyway. A vampire gestation is only a few weeks short, and the pain is almost unbearable for the mother. If she is mortal, she will not survive the birth. Uh, the vampire comes out of her womb by tearing apart her entrails. <laughs> if the mother is a blood drinker, it will probably survive and regenerate. The newborn vampire will quickly grow and turn into an adult vampire in only a few months. Woo! <laughs> Sounds like fun, doesn't it? <laughs> it's locked, all right. And then there's like another note over here somewhere. There's a note somewhere in here. Where does this go? Oh, this is the back alley. Okay. It, it's it's quite something. <laughs> so I was catching up. I was looking over. You guys like Brr. that's intense. Normal childbirth birds be nasty, but that's insane. I don't know if vampire and vampire can have a... I don't know. Uh, my dear mother, when you find this letter, I'll be gone. I want you to know that I 
don't leave because of you. I leave this world because of the crushing weight that existence puts upon me. These times are too much for me. Sometimes I feel like Baudelaire's verses had been written as an echo from my own heart. When the low heavy sky weighs like a lid upon the spirit aching for the light, and all the wide horizon's line is hid by the black day sadder than any night. It's as beautiful as it is painful, mother. <clears throat> I can't suffer anymore. I don't want you to try to convince me, and it only and it would only delay the inevitable, for I would do it again if by any chance you managed to save me once. Farewell, your son, Mortimer. In this letter, Mortimer Goswick does nothing to hide his desire to die. I could give it to his mother, but doing so would betray his trust. We found, we found that letter. That Mortimer wrote for his mom. That he doesn't want her to see. We're headed towards the docks, right? like one HP left. <laughs> They got the way. I don't care about going over there. And I'll use them as a checkpoint. Oh, a bracelet. Nice. I imagine you just sell it. A burn victim? Large and beautiful knife with the name engraved on the blade. Oh, it's Clay's. This must be Clay Cox's knife. A fine blade. No wonder he wants it back. Oh, I can't go in there. Come on, poop. Who's over here, like, ruffling through that stuff? Or rifling? Oh, this goes to nice. It goes to the docks. Actually, let's check down here real quick. Oh, it's... Okay. There's nothing down here. <laughs> Just some money. I thought, I thought I saw a rat. I didn't. Oh, I know where that goes. Doesn't that go to the docks? Yeah, that goes to the docks. <sighs> There's something we have to do over here now. I remember this place. Not up here. I think it's down here. This is the docks, though. Yeah. Uh, I think it's... I think it's over here, actually. Perhaps we should have listened to what the idiot has to say. It's locked. Damn. <laughs> it's close to the docks. I don't remember where it is. It's the guy I couldn't save last time. And now that we're here, we have to save him, I think. I 
just don't remember where it is. I can't. I can't teleport across. I don't remember where it is. It might actually be right over here. Okay. Before we continue, <laughs> really quickly, <laughs> I'm gonna go refill my drink <laughs> and, and use the, the bathroom really quick so you guys can do the same. Quick restroom break. Go get a drink or a snack. And use the restroom if you have to. I'll be right back. I'll run a quick 60 second ad and we'll be good to go. back. I'm alive. Hello. <laughs> uh, I have returned. If you're bearing with me for a second there. I really had to go. <laughs> and I got a nice little, nice little bit of juice again to continue. There we go. Oh, is it just... Oh, okay. Pretty nasty hit right there. Nullified, he's immune to it. Yeah, 
I like that spring. <laughs> that was a little intense. <laughs> I used a good bit of blood for that too. Definitely a fan of the the, the spring thing, where you instantly just rush up to him and attack him. It's pretty nice. I'm a fan. Uh, was ordered by Dr. Thori, Thoria Strickland, Pembroke Hospital, list of substances and ingredients. Uh, medical opium, sodium hydrochloride, and potassium permanent. Per, per, man, man, opium man, man, man. is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move. Yeah, you get them super high and they can't feel anything. <laughs> But no, that's... I thought there were spider webs. It's a bunch of paint. Enter your own risk. Enter at your own risk. Okay. Can't go in here, can we? No, we can't. Well, that's what I was... Not what I was talking about, but... We got that done. That's good. <laughs> Good, I can stun this guy and bite his ass. Over there! This oh, oh, uh, I didn't expect you to die that fast. <laughs> Come here, big boy. I need some of that blood. Delicious. <laughs> now my blood's full again. <laughs> oh, also, uh, yesterday after I got off and stuff, I was thinking about a few things. And why the blood's different. Like, so I have a blood meter, and then you have the... The blood that you steal from citizens. And it gives you, like, experience versus our red blood gauge. And I, whoops. And I think it's more for, like, uh, it kind of makes more sense now. So, you drink the blood. The blood that you use from people, you know, these ones are quick bites. You're biting them, getting some blood, and then, then they're pushing off, and you're pushing them away. And you use it to, like, fuel your attacks kind of thing. Oh, good, I can lock this door. Versus... Um, when you go and you drain someone of, like, all their blood compared to a quick bite, and you can use it to adapt and evolve and get stronger. Alright, it made sense to me anyway. I hope that makes sense. I, th I thought it made kind of sense. How, how it works. You bite people in combat versus just drinking all of their blood. It works so well. Yeah, this, this is the gate. This is it. I found it. Uh-huh. <laughs> 
Come here. <laughs> That combo's pretty strong. So far. Bite, do the thing, run away really quick. I wasn't able to save this guy last time. I, I died fighting these things, so he died. But now we get to meet a new character! How's it going, buddy? I saved you this time. Are you all right, sir? What are you doing in a place like this? I'm not sure that's any of your business. I hope you realize that staying here will put your life at great risk. Ha! I'm not afraid of these guards of Prewen, or whatever these thugs call themselves. I can still kick some respect into those youngsters. I wasn't specifically referring to them, but are you really after these men? Why? They took my boy! I've had no news since he joined that crazy gang. So I decided to come and find him myself, to get some answers. I see. But as I said, your life is at risk if you stay here. And I'm not referring to the gangs, either. You should leave, sir. Well, this part of town used to be... nicer, let's say. Perhaps you're right. This isn't the best way to save Andrew. He's okay. Damn it, game. <laughs> Archer has new news from his son since Andrew joined the Guard of Prewin. And he was lost. Now oh, he's found. Does it show you if people are lost? So we met everyone there. Met everyone here, of course. Now we get to meet everybody at the docks. Well, he was lost. Let's say on anybody else. Huh. Right, well, this is the guy I wasn't able to save last time. Looks like you killed that guy, too. Alright, those aren't fresh. I don't remember this place, though, very well. A silver mirror? Okay. Another fan fancy little thing to sell, I guess. Those recycles into something pretty good. There wouldn't be any enemies here, would there? That's not fresh either. Uh, dear mother, whatever happens to me, always remember that your son loves you. I know you did not always approve the way I chose to live my life, but I won't change. I was born and raised in this part of town, and I just can't stand what has happened to my neighborhood, to people we know. I recently made a terrible decision. I decided to strike back against the tyranny of a few. I know that they will retaliate, but I'm ready for whatever comes. Thanks to you, I've always loved to read. Now that I am about to take action, uh, I can only quote Etini de la Boeshi. I think I hope I got that right. Uh, they only seem tall because we are on our knees. I won't kneel anymore, Mother. I intend to stand straight, whatever the cost. Goodbye, my beloved mother. Jack. Signed, Jack. There is a name engraved under the blood on the back of the case. Jack Gillingham. Maybe I should return this watch to his family. Ooh, perfume. Do it to you. Enid, uh, Enid Gillingham. Oh, she's sick too. He should move on from here, pretty sure. 
Are you sure you'll be able to reach the docks alone? Young man, I am perfectly capable of defending myself. Yeah, okay. He's gonna go by himself. Could just... Is there any other people? You can go learn about the people of the docks. Or... Actually, I think we're like right here by him. Okay, the docks are right over here. So they're literally right across and I can't get to them. <laughs> Do I have to go all the way around? Oh, no, 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 no. There's a gate. There's a gate back here. Isn't there? Yeah. I opened this gate, didn't I? I, I think this is the gate. I could be wrong. Okay, maybe not. Let's see what's up here. Hello, anybody home? Honestly, I don't know where we are right now. <laughs> I told, I assume we're at the docks, but I'm like just running around getting lost. <laughs> oh no, we are at the docks. Yeah, we're here. Okay, we made it. I remember this. Yep. Oh. From Seymour to my beloved mother, Stella. From Seymour to my beloved mother, Stella. What is this doing here? Who are these people? All right. <laughs> uh... Oh, away. Hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Why must it always be a good evening? I was just being polite. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may. Don't like questions. Or doctors. And the name is Seymour Fishburne, if you must know. Oh. Oh, this is Seymour. Okay. What a great way to kick off a conversation. <laughs> I found this gift. And the corpses! <laughs> Don't even know anything about the person, just, <laughs> just sit with that. What's your occupation? I take care of my mum. That's what I do. My mum. She's the only good thing in my life. Even though I don't treat her so good. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to be a good son. I just want her to smile. No, I was thankful for her patience, appreciated like. God knows she deserves it. You seem upset. Is something bothering you? I lost the necklace I bought her. I'm a fucking idiot. A worthless idiot. Oh, hey, I found that necklace. And the corpses. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we'll get to that in a sec. <laughs> What can you tell me about this part of town? A shithole filled with maggots. Liars and thieves, all of them. Huh. Are you thinking about someone in particular? No. Nope. Hate them all. Especially these petty, whining little shitbag beggars. Okay. Is there no one who deserves your leniency, then? Well... Tom from our local is somewhat of a decent bloke. At least, unlike most maggots, he knows how to listen without opening his trap. You're gonna work what into a conversation? Oh, and the, yeah. <laughs> and the corpses. <laughs> All right, wait. wait, hold on. Do you require medical assistance? I'll give him this thing. That's something I didn't expect to hear again. A doctor concerned with the health of his patients. Yeah. I could use some help. On several matters, in fact. I don't know which kind of doctor you're used to dealing with. But it's a doctor's purpose to heal people. 
And is it your purpose as well, Mr. Reed? I would say it's a convenient way for gaining people's trust. Oh, he's on to me. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. Could I go give it to his mom instead? I go give it to him. It's a nice portrait. I'll talk to this kid real quick. Hello, boy. Uh, hello. Good evening. Did I scare you? You have nothing to fear from me. No, it's just that people prefer to avoid me. Well, I won't. I'm a doctor. I like your hat. Can I have My it? name is Rufus, <laughs> so Rufus Kingsbury. Just, just take his hat. <laughs> Yoink. What can you tell me about this region? It's all about staying out of trouble. But since most people prefer to avoid me, it's pretty easy. Why do people avoid you? They call me Rufus the Curse. Around here, I'm a bit of a bad luck charm. Have you ever thought about leaving? Where else would I go? At least I know these streets and some people around here. This is my city, for better or worse. It's dedicated. He has anemia. <laughs> Alright. What do you do around here, Rufus? I listen to the news on the dock, sir. And I smile at those kind enough to spare me a bob. Do you have a job? It's hard to work. What with my head and all. Since I was a boy, I've always had trouble remembering what I do and why I do it. What do people say about this place? Things have been tense between the wet boot boys and the communists. They both feel they should run the docks. Okay. Are you alone? Where is your family? I... I don't have any. My parents are dead. So you have no home? You're sleeping rough. No. I mean, yes. I live on the streets. I have no home. Uh, oh, shit. Okay. You know, say something he already knows. You should be careful. Yeah, I already know that. <laughs> um, hmm. Do I have anything on this kid? Not I have nothing. Nothing at all. The typical statement, it's tragic. I guess... I don't want to do this, because, like, probably everyone's like, you know, you should be careful, you're not here all alone, blah, blah, blah. Literally everything everyone says. Yeah. I, I'm going to go with that. This tragic. city has abandoned so many of its children. It's tragic. Oh, well, no worse. I'm not all alone. I have Mrs. Fishburne. She's been very kind to me. Why do you think she's so considerate? I can't say, sir. I guess she's a good soul. Sometimes it's like she replaces the mother I lost, even if we're not related. That's nice. And I got information. <laughs> Rufus used Stella Fishburne as a mother. Oh, she's literally right across the street. Okay. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. We're going to talk about that last line. <laughs> Be careful. Take care. You, you said the same thing twice in half a second. Good evening, madam. I'm Dr. Reed. Could I come in? Why? What do you want? I, want I work to... at the Pembroke Hospital. I'm investigating the flu epidemic in this area. Oh... The Spanish flu. Well, that's quite liberal of you, Doctor. But this is no time to be knocking at people's doors. Yes, it is. Let me in! 
The disease takes away the good people too, madam. Why not let me in? It's Mrs. Fishburne. Stella Fishburne. And yes, indeed. Why not let a doctor in? And that's the charisma part of it. Last time I had a good sleep. I've been nothing but worried. You actually got to kind of see the Jedi mind trick blue blue plan actually work. <laughs> she kind of got mesmerized. Which I think I think it's kind of it's a cool little like thing to add into the game. And you you use it to eat people too, so <laughs> there's that as well. But uh, as per usual, we're gonna ransack the entire place before we do anything else. What you got? What you got? What you got? What you got? There's no eyes in the back of that head, sir. Gentlemen are easy. It's locked. Hey, could you give me the key to open that? <laughs> All right, Miss Fishburn. Let's let's see how nice of a person you are. So you have questions about the flu, then? Yes, among other things. Forgive my rudeness at the door. It's just my son doesn't like strangers coming in the house. You did a really good job on her. She looks old, but not like super old. But like... Mom, oh, that's pretty good. I'm actually impressed. And you can give it to her. Just... <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> I found this. It's supposed to be for you. <laughs> May I ask what you do for a living, Mrs. Fishburne? Since my husband died, I worked at the Dawson Rope Factory, but it closed before the war. I occasionally help at the night asylum in exchange for food. Her VA is pretty good, too. Did your husband die in the war? Oh, no. My Jack was a docker. He died when my Seymour was just a lad. Poor boy saw his dad slip and fall from that scaffolding. How do you pay the rent, then? My Seymour works at the docks, just like his dad. He's very attached to the house he grew up in. It's not always easy, but we get by all right. How is life around here? Life has always been hard in the East End. But it's everywhere nowadays, isn't it? True. Do you think the increase in violence has anything to do with the epidemic? Don't know. But it's most likely linked to the gangs, if you ask me. Recently, it's like everyone has had to pick a side. Violence has always fed on poverty, don't you think? It's a cruel law of the human condition. And selfishness is their rotten fruit. These days, you can just die in the gutter and no one will bat an eye. Pretty sure that's still well. Maybe not as true today for modern modern days. The orphan that regards you as a mother, please tell me about him, Stella. You mean Rufus? I wish I could do even more for the poor boy. Most people are so selfish. But you're not. Years may have passed, but I haven't forgotten how it feels to go through days with nothing but an empty stomach. No personal questions. I don't think it'd be right to give it. I I'd, I'd rather confront the one dude. Goodbye, Miss Fishbone. Take care of yourself. I like her. I like Stella. Please Stella's don't good. stay too long, sir. I'm not. I'm like Rufus. Ah, <laughs> uh, there he is. I just want to hear what he says. <laughs> I found good this evening, necklace. Mr. Fishburne. Yeah, yeah. And the corpses. <laughs> Anything else to talk about? Ah. Uh, Choose what to do with Seymour's Fishburne's necklace. Give it to his mom or give it to him. Well, I mean, he should give it to her, right? Hold on. 
See if I can look at it. There's blood on it and whatnot. It's a really nice necklace. Gonna confront him about it. I have retrieved the gift for your mother, sir. Great. Give it here then and take this for your trouble. I also found the corpses. The ones under which you left the necklace, Mr. Fishburne. Ah, so that's where I left it. I can be a bit stupid sometimes. What? Seymour is a habitual murderer. <laughs> Perfect for the side of town. <laughs> As a man of science, I'd like to try to understand why you killed those people. Why does there need to be a reason? They were just there. It happened. That's all. You're not a mindless animal, Seymour. Surely you have something to say about these murders. Speak up and I will listen without judgment. Could be right, Dr. Reed. Maybe it'll do some good to confide in a gentleman like you. You being educated and all. Did you take pleasure in killing them, Seymour? All those people, all those lives extinguished. I take no pleasure from it. Just gives me peace. Stills the anger. For a time. This rage you feel. Have you ever been able to control it? Resist it? I... I tried. For my mum. I tried for her. Telling the truth made me feel better for a while. We're just getting everything for her. He's the only person that can contain his aggressive nature. Oh. Dang, please! <laughs> uh, Seymour's aggressive nature seems contained by his. Mo okay. A double hint. Don't you think you should seek help? Talk to someone you trust, someone who cares about you. No. And don't dare speak about me to your colleagues either. Keep your mouth shut tight. Especially about my mum. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna I'll kick your ass. <laughs> you won't do anything. Tell me about your victims, Seymour. Who were they? Why them? Was there a link? Why should there be? They just kept getting on my nerves at the worst times, that's all. You feel nothing, do you? No empathy for your victims at all. You seem pretty calm yourself, don't you? We're not talking about me. That right. Well, our calm's the only thing we have in common then. How many? How many victims? It's not like I keep records. It happens when it happens. Why is your mother protecting you, Seymour? I'm a son. She's the only one who knows me. Sometimes I think she knows me better than I know myself. I understand you love her, but can't you see the awful situation you've put her in? Do you think my mum would have a better life if I were dead? She seems so sad to know me sometimes. Death is an appropriate punishment. <laughs> Or it's not inappropriate. I, honestly, you probably do deserve to be dead. I would even consider it in the future, since I can't do it right now. To just. <sighs> okay. I understand your mother's situation. Obtaining justice at the price of betraying her own flesh. Quite a dilemma. It might be my mum's wish that I end up swinging from a hangman's noose, but she wouldn't want to be the one who ties a knot round my neck. Ooh, pick the right one. Nailed it. <laughs> Zella refuses to send her son Seymour to his death by denouncing him, but she wants to. Maybe. Goodbye, Mr. Fishburne. 120 XP for that, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. 
Stella, we need to talk. I know I can't eat your son till the future, but can we talk real quick? <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. Fishburne. May I come in, please? Of course, Dr. Reed. I'm not sure the epidemic is what worries people most these days. What can I do for you, Dr. Reed? Holy crap. <laughs> your son is a murderer. <laughs> she already knows that. Stella, I know you are ashamed of your son's crimes. So why do you protect Seymour? I can't report my own son, can I? Not a burden I could bear. Burden? How do you mean? They'd hang him for sure. I won't send my only son to his death. I'm convinced you raised Seymour the best you could. You're not responsible for what he became. If someone ever found the courage to speak to the police, I will take my share. Oh shit. So she does, she, she, she wants him to be arrested, but she doesn't want to be the one that does it. I just got her approval <laughs> to eat him. <laughs> just I can't do it yet. Tell me about these demons Seymour needs your help to fight. Seymour used to be such a happy child. And he is still a helping son most of the time. But when he gets angry... He can hardly contain his rage. All men and women are born innocent, Mrs. Fishburne. But there can be a monster within any of us. Do you think he can be cured, Doctor? Do you think something can extinguish this rage inside my Seymour? Uh, I don't know. I think he's too far gone. Because he already accepts it. He already accepts that he's... He doesn't try to, like, not deal with it. He gets angry and he kills people. Because he's angry. And then it just, it just keeps happening again and again and again and again. I'm afraid these demons, as he calls them, are just a delusional justification to distance himself from his actions. There ain't no hope, then. Somehow, somewhere, my son has turned into a monster, and nothing will bring him back. It's actually kind of sad to hear her say that. Your son's gone way beyond simply bullying people. He has a taste for blood, and you know it, don't you, Stella? One night, he told me straight up, in his own words. It was several days after one of his... episodes. Why did he confess? Did you suspect something? No. I guess he wanted his old mum to help him fight his, uh... demons. Did Seymour tell you everything that night? More than I could stand. The words he used to describe his... hate, his rage, how he feels when he's done it. This is quite the story. Goodbye, Miss Fishburne. Take care of yourself. I can have some solace in knowing that she approves of the last time I had a good sleep. I've been nothing but worry. The justice that he deserves. But her her VA is is so good that it actually kinda actually kinda hits you a little bit there. Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. Okay. So so long, Rufus. Nothing to talk to. Be careful. Take care. 
<sighs> it's locked, all right. Sorry, I'm quiet. I'm just thinking about it. <laughs> Fatigue again. I don't think there's anything else around here. Just Seymour. Evil Seymour Fishburne. Honestly, I don't know if I've been up here before. This formula is written on a piece of paper. It seems complex and needs to be analyzed. Hey, I got it. I need one of these. I'll get another headbag one. <laughs> Someone has anemia, I forget who has it. Oh! Stamina regeneration, nice. Okay. Perfume. Oh, wow. Three, that's huge. Three rivets. Give me more. That's intense. <laughs> yeah, I can make Tylenol, yeah. <laughs> I'll make one of these just to have them. Since I got a bunch of opium, I I think I can afford to do that now. Yeah, the the rivets. Oh wait, what? I thought the rivets for the spin stuff. Is it from over here though? Yeah, it's for over here, for guns. Which I may use in the future. Though. And these need aluminum parts. Okay, do the same thing for this. Yeah. These use rivets? No, just, okay, just guns. Guns only. Razvan Vasily was infected by Spanish flu, but also has the highly unstable blood of the Skulls. Is the London vampire epidemic transmitted through the flu? I should talk to Dr. Swansea about it. There's two people to talk to as well. Uh, for looking away when they mock my color, I hate myself. For crying like a girl when they insult me, I hate myself. For swearing like a boy when they are gone, I hate myself. For hating my parents, I hate myself. For smiling when customers call me. Oh, excuse me. Sad Brenna, I hate myself. For never finding the courage to tell Tom how I truly feel. I hate myself. <laughs> she, okay. She is interested in Tom Watts. Who is her employer? Good evening, miss. I am Dr. Reed. May I ask you a few questions? Who are you? What do you want? As I just told you, I'm a doctor. From the Pembroke Hospital, actually. The Pembroke Hospital, you say? I ain't paying any bill left by clay. I'm not here to collect payment, Miss... Miss Edwina Cox. So what do you want then? Fancy buying something from me, maybe? Ooh, maybe. Five? Oh, Jesus. Sure, let's Can I got. see what you have to sell? As long as you have money, I'll show you all I have. Nothing, yay. Bullets, shotgun shells... Some stuff for upgrades, at least. Yeah. Small pocket box with an engraved name. Uh, I can't sell that. Bracelet. Okay. 
Thanks you some this. I even sell you a ring. But let's Good actually evening. talk to him. <laughs> Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? You're Clay Clox's wife. What can you tell me about this part of town? You can't trust anyone around here. As soon as you lower your guard, you can be sure some arsehole will take advantage of you. Really? Don't you think that's a little bit excessive? Bastards, all of them. This region only responds to violence and threats. You sound like you're thinking of somebody in particular. Take the grave diggers of Southwark. They must pay me every week, but it looks like they forgot who gave them permission to steal from the dead. Looting corpses oh. in a mass grave. That's... That is a new low. Whatever. Hey, since you're a doctor and all, maybe you can access that forbidden area and remind those bastards what they owe. <laughs> what can you tell me about your work? I'm a businesswoman. I buy and sell things, and I send my wet boot boys after anyone who don't play nice with me. Gang member and shopkeeper. Can't be easy running double shifts. If you're interested, I may find use of a doctor who can freely walk across the city, you know. You're quite blunt, aren't you? I like people who know what they want and say what they think. This is a time of great opportunity for those ready to embrace their destiny. I'm not interested in a career in the criminal underworld, Miss Cox. Fair enough. Stay away from us, then, if you don't want to get hurt or worse. Since my return from the war, I don't feel that concerned by threats, knives, or even bullets, if you must know. That's exactly what that stupid trade unionist claimed after he attacked one of us. Booth and I reminded him a bullet beats words every time. Doesn't work against me, because I just regenerate. Wayne and Booth Digby have recently killed a man in retaliation. Tell me about the man you and Booth killed, Edwina. The bastard killed one of us and received retribution. There's nothing else to say. And your conscience is clear. You kill without hesitation. Violence is an efficient tool, Dr. Reed. When used properly. So you decide who lives and who dies. Just like that. Yes, Doctor. Just like that. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm saying it's my way of dealing with troublemakers. What happened exactly? I don't know and I don't care. One of ours was killed by that communist bastard. But he didn't brag for long. So you have no idea what really happened. But you executed him anyway. No one messes with the wet boot boys, Doctor. This is our territory, and this is our law. Okay. Goodbye, Miss Cox. You go talk to... What's the space that's over here? There he is. Good evening, sir. Who the fuck are you? Don't you see I'm busy here? Dr. Jonathan Reed, that's who I am. I am and who are you? Significantly taller oh, than some you. Holy fancy hell. gentleman we've got here. Clear off. We don't want strangers on our streets. So you won't tell me your name then? The name is Booth Digby. Maybe I'll ask my boys to break one or two of your bones, just so you remember it. Like, <laughs> you're so small. <laughs> Are you some kind of vigilante patrolling these streets at night? Something like that, but the police aren't in charge here. We are, see? Oh, really? So you're a concerned criminal, is that it? Using funny jokes about me and my boys, are you? Fuck. You must have some balls. I saw many men like you during the war, Mr. Digby. Greedy little cockroaches who feed on despair. I could kill you for saying that. But, nah. You've been a soldier. I can respect that. So, tell me about your gang, then. What? Have you got a death wish? You really want me to answer that? Well, yes. You seem so proud of your status. Why not tell me who you're working for? Oi! I'm the boss, all right? The wet boot boys work for me. 
All of them. Situation round here is better than other districts because of us. Because of me. What can you tell me about this part of town? Things ain't that bad, thanks to us. We give people what they need, and we control this borough. Well, you're not doing a very good job. People are still dying here, like everywhere else. Yeah, well, we can't be everywhere all the time. And if Weena says if we can find more guns, we could be more efficient. More efficient? Really? You should probably tell Edwina that guns are useless against diseases and infections. Incredible. You know what? You're lucky she can't hear you right now. She's more smart than patient, my sweet queen of the docks. Booth may be in love with Edwina Cox, but she is the true leader of the game. <coughs> oh my gosh. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Ah, uh, she's the leader of the gang. <laughs> Sorry about that. Tell me about the man you killed, Booth. What happened? One of us had been killed, so we had to retaliate. That's the whole story. There has to be more to it than that. No, really. One of us got killed, so the killer had to die. That's how things have always been done round here. No one gives a shit. I think you're wrong. Maybe the docks have always been violent, but you can't say the living don't suffer because of it. And then what? Let the commies and the anarchists rule? Nah. We're the wet boot boys. Our fathers died on these docks and they belong to us. Goodbye, Mr. Dickey. He's, he's a cool kid is what he is. <laughs> Oh, she blends in pretty well with that wall, actually. Always girl and her pretty principles. She's got no idea who she's dealing with. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again. Boo Digby looks at you with love-struck eyes. Tell me, Edwina, is the feeling mutual? You have no idea how refreshing it can be for a woman to receive all the pleasure she needs. For once. Hmm. I'll take your word for it. What is it, Doctor? A woman's not supposed to talk about these things. I'm not that easily shocked, Miss Cox. You can speak freely about your lover, if you so wish. The poor bastard is good to me, if you must know. He makes me feel good. And that's a first. So you're just like any other couple, after all, are you not? Yeah, we're so ordinary that I'd put a bullet in his head if he ever cheated on me. <laughs> Rena suspects Booth Digby to be unfaithful. Oh shit. <laughs> you done goof, Digby. <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Cox. Wonder if I can ask him. Oi. <laughs> you again. What do you want? Do you know, Edwina suspects you to be unfaithful. Edwina's the one who asked to be called Mrs. Cox, even though Clay hadn't touched her for such a long time. You have not answered my question. She's a passionate woman. I've no doubt she'll shoot me down if I ever betray her, but that's not going to happen. I love her as she is. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Digby. There's got to be something there, though. It's gonna be something that we can find that says that he's cheating. And you... You give it to her and she murders him. And it would be hilarious. <laughs> but also a waste of good XP, man. It's, it's a good bit of XP right there. Oh, he, he walked away. He's, he's got a good bit of XP in those veins. Could use that. Hello, Frank. How are you, my old friend? It's good to see you last week. Next time, let me get the rounds in. I hope everything is okay on your side of town. Here, in your old neighborhood, the situation is getting worse. Clay is getting more violent every day. 
and is only thinking about expansion, even when it seems uh, there are some new players around. There are some new players around. They actually fucked that up. Uh, trying to dispute our territory. The wet boot bullies are in a bad spot, I'm afraid. So I thought about what you said last time you met, that you never regretted leaving the gang. But the only thing you regret is never being able to put foot in the East End again to avoid a good beating or worse. Well, rest assured that you'd have my protection if you decide to pass by. Maybe we could talk again about new opportunities and a job offer. You know, I have always been good with numbers, so maybe if you need an accountant in your company, let's talk about it, shall we? Say hello to your wife for me. WDB for life, old chap. Booth Digby. Booth has already tried to find a job, so he could quit the Wet Boot Boys. Huh. Oh, hold on. Oh, no, this is money. It's just money. Oh, more money. People just leave shillings lying around. <laughs> Bonus for me, I guess. Oh, hello. Oh, they didn't hear me. Cool. Hello. He's dead. Oh. I I do have a nice level advantage on these guys. <laughs> I guess I'm immune to disease being a vampire, so it's not that bad actually fighting these dudes. Oh, hello. Come on over, gentlemen. Enjoy my little ambush technique. Oh shit! <laughs> Did not expect that. <laughs> hey, easy peasy, no problem. Give me the old ambush technique. <laughs> it's it's pretty effective, right? I wanted to loot this first. We can go up there. It works great. They all crowd around you and you just whoop. Bye! <laughs> and it, it hit most of them. So that was, that was the good part of it. Okay. This is like the beginning of the game. Kinda. Stuff I miss back here. Uh... Actually, we can run back towards the beginning of the game and see if there's anything. Since we're here. It's locked. Can I open it from this side? Cool. The other side? Oh my god! It's a good thing I don't have a webcam. This 
Because I just jumped fucking real hard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see it. <laughs> I, I saw him and I just started swinging. <laughs> oh, it's locked, all right. But that would be one good funny thing if I had a webcam. Y'all, y'all would have seen me jump real hard. <laughs> Oh, you won't? Heh. <laughs> oh, well. Heh. <laughs> oh, hey. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I have this. Thirst for blood. Yeah, this is the beginning of the game. Nice. It's work! Ah! Murdering bosses! No! Yeah! Sorry, you're not gonna be able to shoot me with a crossbow. I enjoy biting you. Over there. Boo. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> that would be pretty scary, actually. You're sitting there just waiting. It's like, I know he's going to come around the corner. He just pops up right next to you. D&D &D style. Oh, he didn't die. Over there! There's one of them burning! Come here, I need HP. No one else around? Nice. Oh, this dude's not over here? Oh, there was a dude over here at the beginning of the game. Somebody else? Is there a guy over here? Okay, so it's not all the same. There was a dude over here last time. At the beginning of the game. It's locked. It's locked, all right. <sighs> Lock two. Hello. That goes back to the docks. Yeah, that goes back to the docks. So what's over here? Oh, track man. There's rats, which I don't need right now. Oh, can I not go? Oh, I cannot man. enter. Okay, well, we can't go any further back. <laughs> that looks like. And we're 
Okay, we're in the docks again. Can I not go back anymore? What's over here? I can't go to the western docks. What? Well, that sucks. Silver cut clothing. Dawson and Dawson. I've already been in there. This is where that dead guy was. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We're kind of back at the beginning. I can see if I can go further back. Like, back, back. Uh, I have to go back down towards the sewers, though. Oh, yeah, he has anemia. Okay, hey. Evening, Rufus. Evening, Mr. Reed. Do you need help? Anemia. <laughs> I know somebody doctor needed. caring about me. That's a first. I feel like a real person. A real doctor treats everyone the same, Rufus. I don't know what to say. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So long, Rufus. Be careful. Take care. Fifty. It's, it's. I'll take that. That's a nice bit of XP. We've got a nice stockpile of experience that we should probably use soon. It's just. I think this is the way back to the beginning. Okay, I know where I am now. Uh, yeah, let me keep going on. I, th I think I like the camera zoom out. Is there anybody on the barge? Apparently not. They probably are, it's just it's not loading. Or they didn't, I don't know, they didn't do it, maybe. And that's why you don't skip anything. Alright. Oh, hold on. Some alcohol and gun parts. I'll take gun parts. That feels really fast. Oh, hello. Over there! There's one of them! Bloody boy! Bloody They're level three and four. <laughs> I can't do anything with them. I just hit them and they die. <laughs> yep, definitely back at the beginning of the game. And now you can kind of see how big levels are. Being several levels higher than them, I'm uh, a lot stronger than they are. It's, it's like significant. To where I can just smack them and they die. This guy's still here. Ooh, I can open this. What's good in there? Okay, there's nothing good in here. Except for some parts. Which is actually not that bad. Ooh, let's, okay. This is open. Some more shillings. It's locked, alright. It's locked. <laughs> Over 
I took care of the vermin. <laughs> Which is you guys. <laughs> this seems so unfair. Can I go up there? Go up there, which I just came from. And up here. Ooh. Anything good? No, nope. I got a lot of bullets, though. Some shillings. There's not much here. Let's make another for anemia. I got a bunch of cigarette cases. Oh no, I kept some. I kept some. I, okay, I need the blue ones. Got it. Should I, like, upgrade one of these and, like, use it? Like, have a one-handed weapon, too? This thing's just so good. I would, it does a lot of stun damage, but it costs so much stamina. It does, it does the same thing as this thing does. 35. 35. Stun damage, stun damage, stun, reduced. Oh, bleed. Okay. This is just like all stun. Oh, you can reduce the stamina by 40%. That's pretty nice. So minus 12, 16? That makes it a lot better. It only does 24, it's basically half. 24 stamina instead of 40. If you can get it all the way up to the end. I was using this for a little bit. <laughs> for the blood, of course. Increases rate of fire. Add five stun points when projectiles reach their target. Reload, damage, reload. I should get that other shotgun from What's His Face. And just use that and then have a one hand and a shotgun. So I have this big thing in my one hand, and then for an offhand weapon, it'll be a shotgun and I don't know, like cudgel or something like that. I have to go buy it from them though. I don't remember how much it costs like 300 or something. It costs a lot. Oh, don't even know why I'm hiding. <laughs> Hi, buddy. It's in the ah! Christ, he's dead! Ah! How much does this do? Ah! Almost kills him. <laughs> I can bite him and almost kill him. <laughs> oh, hey, I remember this. memory of those who were killed in the bomb attack at the Dawson and Dawson Ammunitions Factory near this spot on the 26th of June 1908. London will not forget them and all those who suffered that day. I'm more impressed that I could read it. And they actually put something like that in the, in the game. in here before, right? Yeah, this is the first place you come to. Yeah. This is the first house you... and you shoot yourself, yeah. Just another rest area. Oh, 
Oh, you, okay, you can't rest here. I guess if you missed anything, you can come back for it. That's nice. But it's actually not a safe house. It's a beginning of the game safe house. Yeah, I want to get like down here. Or back, 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 like back at the super beginning. You alright, Sharky? We may or may not be here. I don't know what time it is, actually. If, yeah, 7.22. Be going for another few minutes, and then, uh... I got D&D &D here at 8 o'clock again. <laughs> but I might stay till, like, quarter till or so. Like, 7.45, so we got maybe another, like, 20-ish minutes. Through the wall. Your man! <laughs> oh, they didn't hear him. Nice. Noise. It fell all the way over there. Ooh! Plain steel key designed to open a grid or a door. In the factory. Can I teleport up or something? I'm more surprised this place is still running. There's nobody here. But everything is on and running. They use lava. <laughs> I don't think it's actually lava. I think it's molten iron. Hello, lads. It's one of them. Ah, shit, that leech is fast. So fast. Just uh, just two hits or so it takes. Ooh, hold on. Get up there. It looks like I can. I think there's more stuff to uh, actually explore. We had to just run at the beginning of the game. AI was a little bit smarter and would actually stay back and just point their gun. Because, like, that's what you would probably do. You wouldn't run after a vampire that ran around a corner. But, I know, video games, anyway. Nice, I can use that door now. I like it. Give me all the booty. <laughs> I would have loved it if there was like three people in here and I did that. Pharaoh's Tartar. A note that we'll read in a second after I loot all other stuff. Anything else? There's not a lot up here actually. Okay, let's find out what this note is then. Laughing at the guard. Damn it, game. Fertile was the. Okay, yeah, we read that. That's the pregnancy thing. Okay. 
laughing, laughing at the guard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> For more than a century, the guard of Prewin has been a... Uh, is it descendant? No. No way. A dissident faction from the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole. It is important, as the divergence of opinion between our two fraternities are now well established, to remember what happened and why we shall, alas, consider these former brothers our opponents and adversaries and mark their law of conduct. Kendall Stone, founder of the Guard in 1801. Write that down. Uh, he was a former legate of the Brotherhood and long-standing member of the Brotherhood Council. His departure was the result of an irico... Oh, man. I hate words sometimes. Irreconcilable dispute within the council. I'm sure I said that wrong. Irreconcilable. Maybe I did. Within the council. Uh, when Kendall stated that the Brotherhood had to reconsider its non-violent approach to the study of vampires and that the eradications of these immortals had to be the ultimate goal for all of our researches. Since the terrible schism occurred, uh, relations between the Guard and the Brotherhood have always been difficult. The Guard of Prewin considers the Brotherhood as traitors and allies of their foes. While we call them, so, while they, while we call them thieves and zealots for the many ancient and precious books we kept for centuries, which they destroyed, which they destroyed or stole when they left. I will constantly recuse any accusation of cowardice, for I know the courage it requires for our brothers to approach and observe hostile immortals. I will never forget the cruel loss of the unique texts and scrolls burnt by Kendall and its followers when they left, and I will never cease to laugh at their stupidity. Uh, revealed in their very name, since they chose to call themselves the God of Prewin, as a reference of King Arthur's shield, thus defining themselves as the true defenders of this land. When the true scholar perfectly knows that in the book of Taliesin, Pridewin is only the name of Arthur's boat during his expedition to the mythical territories of Anwifen, Anwifen? What a symbol indeed. From Whispers from Our Past by Usher Taltry, Primate of the St. Paul. Look, Taliesin's name is in this game. <laughs> I don't think I missed anything, though. That's it. It might be something that I got really soon. Or maybe it's just a lure, a little exploration lure thing. It's probably what it is. Just some extra lore. Oh, I came in. Yeah, okay. I came in here and I couldn't go upstairs. Go down a little bit. Now we're in the sewer. <laughs> Hello. I have to hit it. <laughs> Pretty tight. Nope, it's not lootable. Right. I heard them scream. I know I heard it. go that way. I feel slightly lost now. <laughs> There's a lot of twists and ties through here. There's a sewer system? Oh my gosh.
dead dude? What's up, dead dude? Oh, just, just loot. Nothing else, just loot. Where the hell am I? I'm still in Southport, okay. It's like in the middle of nowhere. This place. Rain may have washed away the blood, but not the memory. My poor Mary. Okay, now we're at the beginning of the game. So I'm there. We're gonna go a little bit further, read a little bit, maybe get back to the docks. I won't stop. Uh, hello, boys. How about your last message concerning your mission to loot corpses in Southwark? Uh, Southwark. I keep forgetting the W is silent. In Southwark. Uh, I'll say, uh, I'll only say it once. Deal with it. And be glad I don't report your protest to Edwina. She might go there herself to cut your balls off. <laughs> a little bird also told me you made a few jokes about what I saw by the pier. So now, I'm just a loony scared by his own shadow. Or a nutcase who mumbles and trembles like an old woman about ghost stories. Good. I like it when my boys are happy. Be assured that nutcase will come to piss on your bloody carcasses. After the fucking monster I saw has sucked your brains out. Enjoy the following nights, fellows. I heard they will be foggy and rainy. And Booth Digby. Welcome back, Sharky. We're getting some extra stuff. But before we... This uh, is my watch. Damn grave robbers. Ha! Huh. I got my watch back. <laughs> Honestly, I thought we had it already. Elegant pocket watch that was stolen from Jonathan before his body was thrown in a mass grave. Hmm. We're at least making it back to the docks before I end, because... I don't want to come back to this winding, crazy, I don't know where the hell I'm at thing. So I, I almost got, I got lost trying to get here. <laughs> almost. I think we got the letter, actually. The thing that they wanted, right? Edwina and stuff wanted. Report the death of the grave diggers or hide the truth. Oh. Okay, we got what we wanted. Tell her they're dead, or? Like, why not? Oh, I guess you could lie and then she'd come down here and die, maybe? Trying to look for him? Time to get back. <laughs> I can see what's up here. I'll probably just do an improvised dinner and literally just have cereal. <laughs> Which I'm not ashamed about. Just have cereal for dinner. <laughs> It's a lot faster to get out of here. <laughs> I chose the right way to going through those winding streets and in the factory and whatnot. No, nope, I remember that is. Never mind. Okay, we're on the we're on the right track. I have to go through this giant like thing, right? Yeah. I have to go across the bridge and we'll be good. King and country needs you. Oh, we saw that before. We saw that at the beginning of the game. I don't know if it's faster, but it feels really quick.
Oh, I can't do it anymore. I can't teleport around. I think we're here. Did we make it? Yeah, we made it. Alright, very good. We'll talk to Edwina really quick. Actually, what well, I guess, what, what do you... Should we tell them? Should we tell her they're dead or not? Okay, now, so is we should tell her that the grave robbers are dead or not. That's what it was, right? Choose what to tell Irina Cox. Report that the grave diggers are dead or hide the truth. Edwina Cox, merchant and wannabe crime lord of the East End Docks, bluntly asked me if I would take advantage of my position in the medical profession to access the forbidden area of Southwark. She wants me to scold some grave diggers who have not sent their weekly share of trinkets and money they stole from the dead. I wonder if I should go back there and explain myself to those criminals that what they do is very, very wrong. I don't know. Without the wet boots keeping things straight, these parts will be running completely amok. So imagine if we tell her, she might give us money. But if we tell her, like, I don't know, they got away or we didn't see him, maybe she... I would tell her for information. She might give us information if we tell her that they're dead. Uh, that they're, yeah. That might be the only reason to do it. Pleasure, sir. Been a while since we've seen any new faces around here. Good evening, Miss Cox. Hello again, Dr. Reed. What do you want? I managed to reach the mass grave in Southwark. It was not pleasant. Spare me the details, Dr. Reed. All I want to know is what happened to those bastards who owed me money. Yeah, it's actually just two options. Either they're dead or we didn't see them. She might give us information or something if we tell them they're dead. It could be the last hint. Or we tell them, well, I, I don't know. I don't know where they went. I kind of want the reward, whatever it is. Just, just tell her they're dead. <laughs> she hasn't, she hasn't been an ass to us or anything. I'm afraid those bastards, as you call them, are in the mass grave. Dead. Shit. That money would have been useful. Well, I'll tell my boys to avoid the place if it's that dangerous. Yes. Everybody should avoid that place until further notice. Okay then, Doctor. It looks like you deserve your reward after all. The wet boot boys thank you for your help. At 50 shillings is pretty good. Money. I will not scoff away from free money. Can I see what you have to sell? As long as you have money, I'll show you all I have. Oh, she has the ring that we gave her. <laughs> yeah, she has, like, these things, which is nice. You can upgrade your stuff with this stuff. And we've got 750 shillings. It's pretty good. My pocket watch is the same price as all the other ones. Pocket watch isn't that fancy. I'm more or less going over here for Malady's. Go Just head in here and I'm just gonna come up here and kinda kinda end it there. <laughs> and then we got everyone in here to talk to. When we start back up. Alright, I know it's later than I wanted to end, but we got back. We had some fun. Gives me about 20 minutes to make dinner, which I'm probably literally just going to have cereal. And I can get ready for a D&D here at 8 o'clock. But thanks for hanging out. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. What is tomorrow? Tomorrow is Monday. Probably start a little bit later. For, oh, no. We got... Oh, I got to raid tomorrow. Uh...
if I don't I stream in the afternoon, I've never even been to India. I will have a stream later on, around like eight o'clock tomorrow, which will just be hanging out and in, in WoW doing doing Max Ramus with with the boys. I hope I live long enough to see them wet boot boys get what's coming to them. But we got some extra spicy story stuff to go on, and you guys got a lot of lore today, which is pretty awesome. I forgot how much lore was at the beginning of the game. The things, things to think about. But y'all, y'all have a good night. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you tomorrow, if not early afternoon, then I will see you towards the evening. Bye bye.